more diverse people in an area, the more you learn. If you look at the numbers, there is a lot of diversity at Jesuit. Um, but honestly, like I think, I don't, I don't think it's very diverse. Like there are times when I will be like the only black person in the classroom, the only like ethnic person in the classroom. The lack of diversity kind of makes you feel almost isolated sometimes. Um, no matter how many friends I have or how many sports I play or clubs I do, there's always something that's different about you. Um, regardless of like what social circle you fit into, there's always something where you're like, oh, people don't always look like me. My name is Melissa Lowry and I am the Director of Diversity and Inclusion here at Jesuit High School. Um, I'm Kendall Shelby, I'm, in, I'm a senior and I am 17 years old. My name is Elzina Henry, I am a senior and I am 18 years old. I'm Mylon Garnett, I'm 17 and I'm a senior. Diversity is being different. To me, diversity is like a big range of things. It's not just your race. I think it's your sexual identity. I think it's the people you spend time with. I think it's your culture. Think of the word diversity. I think of uh, various cultures and people. Uh, the main thing I think about is different. It's not just about race. I think a lot of people here um, at Jesuit assume that diversity equals race when it does, but it also includes so much more. There is some, put it that way, there's some diversity. Um, if you think of it as a whole, you have students here that are different religions, different colors, different um, cultural backgrounds. The administration has maybe noticed that there's an extreme lack of diversity in the faculty and not just in the students, and that they're trying to take steps to improve that, so that's good to know. I think it would be the most empowering thing to have people who look like me and my dad and my family. Um, I think it'd be very empowering for people um, to have any level of diversity um, as teachers, just because they see what they're being, like, they see what the department is teaching, um, their voice for us immediately rather than going to go seek them out. Uh, they're not in a place of admit, in a place of administration or a place where they're hired. I just want knowledgeable professors, and if you can get me someone who looks like me, who is knowledgeable, because I know they're out there, I would love to see that. Um, a certain, I don't know really a number. I don't know a percentage. Just more than what we have now. I mean, no. I mean, there's like diversity directors and like counselors, but there's no like actual teachers. I think that'd be like a first step for sure. Being hired will help other women of color um, and teachers, um, which we definitely need here. Um, so uh, I'm excited about it. And, you know, I feel for the young girls of color that are here, um, I know it's a special uh, place in their hearts that there is somebody here that looks like them and can represent them um, and so for that I'm really I'm really happy. Word of mouth, um, reaching out to other communities I think um, would definitely sort of help draw people to come in but they won't come if they don't see that they're reflected here and that they're welcome here so we have to start with you know um, changing that uh, mindset. If, like at first you're like it's just really happening like you don't want to really jump to that conclusion right away, at least I don't really want to jump to that conclusion right away that somebody's discriminating against me because the color of my skin or treating me a certain way because of like the way I look. But after you think about it, you go over the scenario in your head, you think about like, okay, like if I was white, that definitely wouldn't happen. Then you kind of can put together that it was some sort of like racial discrimination. And that just feels really weird because at that, I mean, you're not really, I don't like to react just in the moment because, I mean, what if they weren't discriminated against you, then you just look a little crazy. But, I mean, when you think about it, and then, like, it makes you feel kind of hurt because you can't really do anything about it. I mean, you can go up to them and approach them about it, but, I mean, it's out of the moment. They may not even remember, I, and you may not even remember exactly what happened. So it's just kind of hurtful to know that, like, it hurts you. It's hard to know what has impacted who because a lot of students won't talk about it and they don't know how to talk about it. There just should be more. Like, we can't just say that's enough. Like, there's, that's never enough. 
because students, even with the programs now, still feel extremely uncomfortable in their classrooms and in the hallways. Uh, students still feel isolated. Uh, they feel unsafe um, and just very uncomfortable to the point of they've become comfortable with being completely uncomfortable. Jesuit is on the right track. Students are on the right track and um, it's going to be really exciting to start having that dialogue and having kids start to express themselves even though they haven't been able to express themselves and have these conversations before. So we're excited about that. My hope for Jesuit um, is to see more diversity here. Um, just within the students in general and also within the staff. Not saying that it has to be like all black people or all a certain type of race or anything like that, but I would hope that there would be way more diversity on the staff, um, on the administration, and within the students. I think that diversity is really hard to fight for in Jesuit. I feel like it's been an ongoing battle. Um, and I, like, I think my biggest hope for Jesuit is they start to see the importance of it and they start to realize that change needs to be made, not small changes. We need to start making the bigger changes. Um, and I think that I think that a lot of times Jesuit, the Catholic Church, um, just people in general, I think that they can see a conflict and they want to shy away from it. And they can be like, I don't want to upset these people. I don't want to upset the parents. I don't want to upset like our superiors. But I think that's important. Like you need to not be afraid of confrontation and you need to not be afraid to do things like that. And that's how the change is going to be made. And after all this time, my four years of being here, I think that um, I'd love to come back in like 10 years and to see a different, a different community and to see a stronger community and to see a wider range of students um, who can learn to love and accept each other. I think that prepares a lot for the future.